Are you looking for ways to optimize your organization's cloud environment and critical workloads? Well, stay tuned because in this episode of Azure Enablement Show, we'll explain the value of designing well-architected workloads and then look through some of the fantastic resources to level up your skills. Welcome back to the Azure Enablement Show. My name is Aaron and I'm here with my colleagues, Megan and Ben from Azure Marketing to talk about cloud optimization. Ben is going to talk about the importance of being a good architect and designing for optimization from, from the start. Then Megan will be back to walk us through several learning resources that are available from Microsoft to help us architect better workloads. Ben, will you give our viewers a quick overview of cloud optimization and why it's important? When you're looking at the various workloads or applications that you're planning to either migrate to Azure or you're planning to modernize on Azure, which means that you're going to take an existing architecture and modernize it so that you're taking advantage of all the different cloud uh, benefits. When you go to that extent, what you begin to do is to start to think about what sort of non-functional requirements do I need to support and how do I do that in a cloud uh, environment? To, to be able to answer those sorts of questions as an architect, you have to think about all the different trade-offs that are involved in that sort of those sorts of decisions. First, you also need you need to be thinking about okay, I've got my functional requirements, I know what my non-functional requirements are. How does this all relate to my environment in which the, the, I'm going to run this application? So what will what will typically happen is an architect will have a checklist. Every architect has a checklist. They'll kind of go through that checklist to determine, am I meeting these certain regulatory requirements that my um, IT team's given me? Am I thinking about security in the right way? Am I thinking about cost? And am I thinking about performance in a, the way that I could go about utilizing in the cloud? So when you kind of have that checklist, what you begin to start to think about is, okay, I've got all these different considerations to make. Which are the best for this particular application? The way we go about helping the architect make these sorts of decisions is with what we call the well-architected framework. The well-architected framework is essentially made up of five pillars. It has security, cost optimization, reliability, performance efficiency, and operational excellence. These five pillars have various design principles and various recommendations based on those design principles. And what you do with a well-architected framework like this is you think about the trade-offs. It gives you a different sorts of intelligence about how to think about these trade-offs. And by doing so, you can make a decision for your specific workload. So that's effectively what, what we talk about when we say you're going to design a well-architected workload. So what do customers need to know about the well-architected framework and how it will help them to optimize? The main way to think about the well-architected framework is it's there to help you from the very beginning. So when you start to think about all the different decisions you need to make in the design of that architecture, that's when you bring out the well-architected framework and say, okay, the checklist that I have, let me look at the checklist that's in the well-architected framework and go side by side to see if I'm hitting all the right points. As you go about designing the architecture, if you have a good sense for how security works, and that's that security is a high high requirement for that particular workload, you also need to think about how does that affect cost? Because the more security you bring into a particular architecture, the more it will cost you. And so at some point you have to make a decision. What's that inflection point where there's too much security for the, the budget that you have, for instance? So when they're thinking about it, it sounds like they almost want to be optimization centric, but like, what does that actually mean? Yeah, optimization centric is essentially when you begin to think about um, what are the most important aspects of my non-functional requirements mm. in this workload. So let's take a mission critical workload. A mission critical workload is basically uh, an, a workload that if it goes down, either human lives are, are at risk, mm -hmm or the entire business is at risk. And in both cases, what you wanna make sure is that you have a highly reliable workload, which also means that it needs to be highly resilient. So for something to be highly resilient, that typically means you need to have some sort of redundancy. Redundancy costs money. It also costs performance. And in some cases it costs security because 
the, the larger you make that workload, mm -hmm. the more architecture and infrastructure you bring into that workload, the more different points of contact yeah. and the more um, uh, issues you may have um, across that workload. So the optimization here is on resiliency, but you still have to take into account these other issues or these other possible non-functional non requirements. Incredible. Uh, well, thank you so much for walking us through all of that, Ben, and giving us that overview. I really think the viewers are gonna appreciate how the well-architected framework helps users design and build better workloads. Switching gears, Megan, given what Ben has shared, where can our viewers go to learn more about the well-architected framework and how to build solutions? We have several great resources to help you learn how to design for reliability, security, and performance and optimize workloads from the start. First up is a learning path titled Build Great Solutions on Azure with the Well-Architected Framework, where you'll learn the principles of how to design and build secure, reliable, scalable, and high-performing solutions in Azure. There are a total of six modules in this learning path. The first is the introduction to the Microsoft Azure Well-Architected Framework. This is a self-paced module, and you'll get an overview of the five Azure Well-Architected Framework pillars. You'll get an understanding of how to align your cloud architecture to these pillars, and then you'll be on the path to optimizing your cloud infrastructure and realizing your resiliency goals. Okay, so what are some of the other resources that are out there for users to make sure their organizations are getting the most out of their cloud environment? Oh yes, there's more. Our next resource in Learn is going to recommend the Learn Live Optimization Video Series. It's uh, video lessons from our experts, um, which are virtual events, and they're now available on demand. This series is presented by Microsoft experts, including Ben, who is here as one of our presenters. They bring additional materials, diagrams, case studies, stories to, to the training, and they walk through these learn modules. This gives you excellent context, at, which you cannot get anywhere else. This um, session will cover how to manage your Azure investments and architecture in key areas such as cost optimization, boosting resiliency, as we were talking about earlier, reliability, and then keeping security tight. If you only have time to watch one of these five episodes in this series, I'm gonna recommend the introduction to the Microsoft Azure Well-Architected Framework, where Ben presents. You'll walk away from this episode with an understanding of those five pillars I mentioned in the Well-Architected Framework. And you'll be able to identify the key principles for creating a solid architectural foundation. Thank you so much for taking us through that. This sounds like an awesome set of resources for our viewers to check out. And the other four Learn Live episodes are fantastic. Anyone who wants to learn more about cloud optimization and how to implement these pillars and principles that Megan has talked about, I can check those out um, on Learn Live as well. So Megan, after someone goes through these resources, what would you say are good next steps for them? I recommend that you sign up for the Optimization Virtual Training Day. In this training, which is a virtual workshop over the course of two days, you'll build skills you need to create opportunities and accelerate your understanding of the Microsoft Cloud technologies. You'll get guidance, case studies, resources, tools and learn best practices to really help you develop that optimization mindset to drive efficiencies across your organization. Lastly, I wanna share something new on Azure resiliency and optimization. It's a plan on learn. It includes milestones and learning paths and resources to help you go through the process and learn the, everything from the value of optimization for your organization and workloads through how to enable resiliency, reliability, and security. Ben and Megan, thank you so much for joining us today to chat about cloud optimization. For our viewers, be sure to check out the description below to find links to everything that we talked through. And while you're there, hit that like button and subscribe to the Azure Enablement Show so you don't miss any new episodes. If there's any questions about today's episode, be sure to leave a comment below so we can get back to you. Thanks for watching the Azure Enablement Show.